All right. Uh, hi, everyone. This is meeting number 30 of the Filecoin Core Devs call um, today on November 4th. Um, we will run through our agenda as usual, and then also the team from Bloxico will present one of the dashboarding projects that they've been working on, and we will have time for Q&A at the end as well. Um, unfortunately, we do not have any members of the Lotus implementation team here today since they're at an offsite. Um, so I'll be giving their update. They are still running version uh, V113. Um, there have been no additional security concerns that have been raised. Um, there are currently two additional release candidates that have been pushed to the Lotus repo. And I'll drop a link to those if anyone is curious to see what enhancements are being worked on. Um, but I did go through the checklist this morning and there are no additional bugs um, or broader security concerns that any of the other implementations um, ought to be aware of. I'll also give Dragon a few extra minutes as he joins to see if he has anything additional for Lotus that he wants to flag for the group. Uh, hey, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm slightly late. Uh, nothing much. We are just uh, continuing work on, on Lotus for 1.13.1, the new release, and like uh, printing out PRs uh, for it. Nothing much. I would like to mention maybe not a good watching material about Filecoin Orbit, the event we have, because we're going into details about Snap Deals, FEM, other new things that are coming for next year. So I think it's valuable for other, other teams to, to check it out. Uh, but in Lotus land, we're just continuing the, the release train uh, for now. Not, nothing uh, nothing much happening in, in the sense of like uh, out of the ordinary. Uh, that's the thing. I'm really excited to, to, to see you guys. Thanks. Thanks, Dragon. Sorry to put you on the spot right as you joined. All right. Uh, so we will throw it over to the Forest team. And welcome to Elizabeth, who is joining us. Um, and we'll help give up days for Forest going forward. Well, thank you, Caitlin. Uh, for Forest, yeah, as uh, some of you may be aware, or most of you, we had our first release um, two weeks ago in Orbit Day. So we are at version 0 0.10 alpha. Um, there is a small talk uh, on Orbit Day where we talked about mostly the features that we have at the moment. For Forest team here, we are mostly working on syncing back with the last FIPs. Uh, most of the work is related to that. and uh, as you, uh, some of you again, as you might be aware, uh, we used to have um, Eric, who was our team lead, uh, before we give the update. But as he's a little on an extended vacation, we'll have Elizabeth giving uh, technical updates uh, as needed for the forest team. But that's mostly about it from forest here. Yeah. If uh, Elizabeth has anything to add, uh, otherwise, that's all. Yeah, not a whole lot to add at the moment. Yeah, that's all. Thanks, Lee. Great. Uh, have you guys had any specific challenges trying to resync with mainnet? Or do you have a timeline for when you expect to um, be aligned with all of the recent FIPS that have been released? Um, yeah, we have um, just one kind of issue that we're currently having. Um, there is, yeah, the most of the progress has been done, like most of the code has been implemented. There's just this one sort of um, bug that we're having to, um, yeah, like rust wise we need to fix. Um, so yeah, I think Jorge is working on that currently. And um, in terms of timeline, I'm not entirely sure, but hopefully within the next few weeks, I think. Perfect. Okay, yeah. that sounds great. Cool. Cool, thanks Elizabeth. Any questions for the forest team? All right. Uh, then let's jump over to Maxim with Fuhan. Thank you, Caitlin. So for us, uh, not so many updates actually. We, well, actually there are some. Uh, we've been working uh, quite actively on uh, making our node compatible with latest uh, actress release uh, last week. So all the issues were fixed uh, and uh, we have found out that uh, we have, yeah, uh, and I also want to mention that we have been working on uh, messages republishing in message pool. Uh, it's been successfully implemented uh, to our message pool and uh, node. So now everything is working correctly uh, and uh, 
certain messages are republished when needed by the node uh, and it's uh, fully compatible with uh, how uh, it's implemented in Lotus and working correctly on mainnet and in dropnet. Uh, also wanted to mention that um, we have found out several issues on how payment channel uh, is used. Uh, so there are some miscalculations here and there. Uh, they're not, not, not really major ones. Seems like they're fixable in like uh, several days. Actually, we have already made several fixes and now testing them. So uh, by mid next week, probably we will uh, get rid of every uh, other issues that we have on the backlog related to that. And uh, then we will start, not start, but uh, revalidate uh, our, our node against the mainnet and intropnet. And were, if everything will go well, then uh, we can consider it uh, ready for production. Right. Uh, I will, yeah, I also wanted to mention that, yeah, firstly, uh, we have reassessed uh, our current state of miner. It seems to be in a better position that we, that we initially thought. Uh, we have, uh, so and to, to validate this uh, hypothesis, hypothesis, we have to uh, go through some uh, series of tests, but it seems like uh, our miner is already compatible with uh, uh, Filecoin mainnet. So uh, what we are planning to do is to uh, push set of tests uh, as soon as we can, uh, hopefully in about two weeks, uh, test if everything that we have currently is working correctly. If yes, then uh, maybe we can release both node and miner at the same time. Uh, we have uh, discovered several, not issues, but uh, impossible improvements to our miner already, but they don't seem to be uh, critical, uh, functionally critical. Uh, there are just some performance improvements that can be uh, done and they are not really dramatic ones. So I think we can live with them as of now. And the main focus for us on the minor perspective will be to test everything that we have now uh, and well, to make it as soon as possible. Uh, actually, we have already started some tests on the interopnet. Seems to be working just fine, but uh, it's never enough of testing and we want at least, well, not at least, but especially minor to be like uh, almost flawless, uh, at least at, to, the, to the extent that it, it is doable for us. It's, uh, it's producing high risk for the minor holders. Well, not holders, but users. Uh, yeah. And I also, also, I have another topic. I'm not sure when do we want to address it now or uh, a little bit later on Q and A session. Uh, but we also have done some significant progress on implementing spec actors, uh, the C++ ones. And uh, it seems like there are like certain issues that I wanted to discuss with other implementations. Uh, do we want to do it now or a little bit later? Um, let's go right into it now. Um... We have plenty of time today, so I think this is appropriate. Okay. Uh, so basically, I just, as uh, sorry, yeah, uh, I wanted to ask something like, how long will the tests for miners? Uh, how long that will last until we, before we change the topic? Like in order for us to determine, are we ready for uh, syncing with mainnet? Do, do we have an estimation? Maybe I'm just curious. Yeah, uh, as I said, uh, probably. Well, current estimate is about two weeks. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, well, if something will happen again, like uh, this is like, I think that's more shiny day scenario. So if mm -hmm. nothing bad will happen, then probably two weeks. If we'll find out something, then probably a little, little bit longer, but. Uh, yeah, so potentially on the next core, like next core dev call, we, we might hear some uh, potentially good news. Yeah, okay, okay, thanks, sorry. <laughs> Uh, yeah, as for the spec actors, um, basically currently we are on the path of implementing our own act, uh, actors and uh, we have to implement every other, well, ev every version that, that was previously on the mainnet and the single purpose of uh, backward compatibility and uh, every C++, C++ uh, node holder 
to be able to resync the network from the block zero. Uh, however, most of the use cases uh, are now, uh, well, at least as we see them and as we ask out from the community, is to resync from the snapshot. It's way easier and uh, usually sufficient to do so. Um, and we are like, as we are spending so much effort on spect actors, uh, it's also not uh, obvious how can we validate that our actors are like working correctly as um, uh, test vectors for spec actors are not supported for like, I think uh, six months at least, maybe even more. So the latest uh, version that we currently have on field actors, field uh, test vectors, is uh, supporting uh, actors with two and not in full capacity. So uh, I wanted to discuss how other implementations are uh, addressing this issue of testing against uh, uh, maybe test vectors. Maybe they have all their own set of tests, especially it's. Uh, it is uh, the case for the forest now as they are in production, or, or almost production state. So yeah, any, any thoughts about that? Uh, any hints on how are you guys doing that? And... Yeah. Yeah, I think like we had a similar issue that we discussed today. Maybe Jorge, do you wanna speak a little bit on that one? Because I think uh, we just talked about it today, I think, in a similar way. Yeah, hey everyone. So the question was around getting uh, basically your actor implementations in sync with the, the Lotus actors and how to do that. Uh, yeah, how to validate that your actor's implementation is interoperable with Lotus and mainnet. Well, it's kind of quite clear how to do that with mainnet, current mainnet, but uh, with the previous versions, not sure. Yeah, so we have integrated the, the V5 test vectors uh, into like our test harness. So we had uh, the previous test vectors, which I wasn't involved with, uh, the test harness was just reading the JSON files and then applying all the messages to the VM and then like comparing state routes. Um, but for the workflow for making sure that the forest node uh, is producing the same state tree as the Lotus node, uh, what we've landed on so far is uh, effectively taking the block height where you want to make sure that your state tree is equivalent to the Lotus state tree and then exporting that state tree from Lotus uh, and then at the height right before the fork uh, loading it into your client and then applying uh, the next tip set uh, over uh, the state tree and then seeing where your state tree at that height plus one diverges uh, from the Lotus state tree. So doing like a, like a diffing process. Uh, I'm not entirely familiar with the diffing tools. So I'm just getting like caught up on that. Uh, but at a high level, that's the process we intend to use to make sure we're in sync for the uh, NB13 uh, network upgrade. Okay, that seems to be clear now. Uh, do you have a set of tests publicly available and they can be reused or do you have some of them somewhere in private? The ones that we've been integrating are the ones in the fill uh, spec actors repo. They use our like spec actors tests, uh, which we have. Okay, I see. Um, okay. I'll have to look at that then. Uh, okay, I think that's it from my side for now then. Uh, thanks for the contributions as well. Um, Maxim, depending on your team's development schedule, you may also want to bring this up again next week and just continue to gather feedback. Um, as you continue to like work through um, some of your spec actor problems and also as um, 
folks come in and out of the meeting, uh, you may get different opinions and different approaches as you sort of problem solve through it. Okay, sure. Actually, I have another couple of questions if you have a minute. You said you have plenty of day today. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, so I am currently working, uh, tightly working on uh, improving transparency of our work as a team. And uh, maybe more involvement, uh, what, what I want to achieve is more involvement from the community members and well, at least provide more transparency for them and everyone who is interested. Uh, and I'm currently discovering tools which which can help our team in that. Uh, currently, our project is managed via Jira and uh, other tools, uh, which are not like as transparent as uh, one wants to be them. Uh, and I'm also working on discovering additional tools that can help us in that. The obvious one would be to manage our project in GitHub. Uh, but I am not really sure about how powerful this tool is. Uh, lately, there have been uh, tables added to the GitHub uh, tracking, uh, but I'm not sure they're like sufficient enough. They're not provide road mapping tools and so on. So I wanted to ask uh, other teams, what are you guys using and why uh, in terms of like tracking things and communicating them with the community? Yeah, we sorry, no, Dragon. Okay, no, no, no. Okay, yeah, we mostly use like Git, and you know our repo is open source. And for tracking, we use Zen Hub, which really connects well with the issues. And whatever modifications we kind of make in the Zen Hub board, it reflects on the Git. So most of our PRs and issues are just uh, open. And as far as documentation is concerned. Um, I'm not sure, like Git pages. Uh, let me see here. There's a README on the repo, uh, but I, I'm not sure if it was Git pages or something that links to an external source. Uh, that's how we have been mostly communicating. And internally, we do use Notion, but that's not very transparent. Uh, but to communicate with the community, that's mostly. Okay, thanks. Uh, actually, Zen Hub seems to be really, really nice. I haven't been using it before, but now as I did, it seems to be my number one, the number one priority as of now. Maybe there are other options. Yeah, we use GitHub uh, for most of the things. Uh, just uh, also started like piloting the new version of the boards they do. I uh, was the, the beta tester there. Seems to have nice things coming, similar to what Jira does. Uh, what is currently missing is automation. So we are using the old uh, board versions, uh, but uh, yeah, internally Notion, but just internal documentation. Then we have separate pages uh, where developers can like uh, share share the doc updates. Uh, this is what we do. And then we also use a lot of GitHub discussions, just sharing uh, the like recent news and updates. Uh, what uh, FIBS would be implemented, what, what is the recent news, uh, just uh, trying to get the buy-in from the community and their feedback on things. Yeah, this, uh, but mostly GitHub is the main tool. Thanks. Uh, yeah, I also know that a lot of the storage provider working groups have begun to move over to um, Git book, I think. Uh, so it's a pages extension that integrates with like open issue logs really nicely as well. So if you're looking to um, build out documentation in a way that's a little bit more accessible, um, this platform makes it really nice because it looks like a static wiki page. Um, it's similar to Git pages, um, but Git book, I think, uh, does better at tagging and actually attaching itself to objects um, that may exist in one of those like discussion board items or in one of those timeline items um, on GitHub as well. Um, I think the other side of this question, though, is how do you actually like communicate these things with the community? Um, it's very helpful for other implementers, I think, if you're using GitHub because they know where to find information. Um, but it's also worth looking into whether or not you want a private Slack channel where you can begin to um, share updates uh, specific to the Fuha network um, and also begin to create like biweekly newsletters, um, clear release notes, things like this. Um, and I can sort of walk you through that privately, um, Maxim, as well, to show you how some of the other implementations are doing it and how some other teams um, and even just working groups within the Filecoin ecosystem have also 
kind of uh, come up with fun ways of letting their users or community members know what's going on. Great, thanks. Mm -hmm. Uh, now I'm down to questions, so I think we can proceed. Sounds good. I think, again, it's also worth bringing up this again next week. Um, we'll probably have a very different crop of attendees, um, so you may be able to gather some, some additional ideas, but I think this will be like a running theme and something that we can all sort of collaborate on. All right, uh, any other questions for Maxim? All right, um, so Steven is not here today uh, from the Venus team. Pulled up their release notes really quickly. It looks like they are still running uh, version 111. Um, there are a couple of additional uh, release options that have been listed um, in their GitHub as well. Um, doesn't look like there's any critical security features. I would assume they would let us know if there was. Um, I'll add a link to the proposed change log as well in case anyone would like to see it. Um, and we'll follow up offline with Steven and the rest of the Venus team to see if there's anything that should be added to the meeting notes for the group. Um, if you have any questions for Venus, you're welcome to ask them. I will not have an answer for you, but I'd be sure to pass them along. All right, great. Um, so then we'll jump down last to the Filecoin Foundation. Dudley, do you have anything you'd like to share? Um, no updates for this uh, by week. Cool, thank you. Um, and on my end, from sort of the perspective of FIPS and governance, I think the one thing I do want to note um, are actually two things. The first is that we're going to be fielding a post-mortem questionnaire on the recent chocolate upgrade. So um, check your emails later today or tomorrow, depending on where you are. Um, we're going to send around an anonymous survey so that you can provide feedback about how this network upgrade was for your team. Um, the point is that we want to be able to identify um, any internal challenges that you may have struggled with um, to see if those were replicated in other implementation teams as well, because if so, that's something that we should be trying to solve for you. We also want to know um, if there are any sort of uh, points of confusion, lack of transparency, um, you think there are items that ought to be added to the release checklist, um, you want greater marketing support, sharing information about network changes in your specific implementation. Um, I think most of the survey is going to be open-ended and again, it will be anonymous. So you are welcome to share your most honest thoughts with us that we can continue to improve these release processes. Um, additionally, um, we want this to be kind of an open and collaborative improvement process. So, um, on November 18th, which is a Thursday, we will also be hosting um, a one to one and a half hour debrief on the results of the survey. Um, I, everyone is welcome to attend if they would like to listen and provide feedback and ask additional questions. Um, unfortunately, this, this session is scheduled for later in the afternoon um, in the United States. So if you are in Asia or Eastern Europe, it may be difficult to attend. Um, we will be more than happy, however, to share full meeting notes um, and also adjust those meeting notes if you're unable to attend and have additional information that you'd like to add. Um, so everyone who's currently on the core devs um, meeting invite will get an invitation to that as well. And again, up to you, it's fully optional, uh, but we do appreciate the feedback and guidance, especially if you have something specific that you think the rest of the group could benefit from. Yeah, my, my immediate my immediate feedback would be not to call it postmortem because postmortem means something bad happened. Maybe call it a retrospective. We'll call it a <laughs> retro. Yeah, it's not dead. It's very much alive. Good call. Yeah, yeah, there you go. All right. It's really alive, like production alive. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The network is active. So, yeah. Good call, Dragon. Um. Um, and the only other thing I think that's worth quickly mentioning is um, we are also working specifically on creating better standards for the crypto economic and security audits that are undertaken for each FIP. Um, so in the future, and especially ahead of the next network upgrade, um, before a FIP is presented to the core devs, uh, we expect and hope that we will have completed full crypto econ and full security audits 
with detailed notes available as well. Um, in the past, there have been a lot of open questions about these processes that we haven't been able to answer. Um, and the results of these audits have been a little bit um, sort of lacking in transparency uh, for certain FIPS. We want to improve that. And so do know that this is something we're also working on. And if you have feedback or questions about this in particular, you're always welcome to field those. So. Okay. Cool. Uh, any last questions before we hand it over to the Bloxico team? All right. Um, Dragon, do you want to introduce the Bloxico team? Um, I think they're, they were invited per your suggestion. Yeah, just uh, like a quick intro, we're trying to basically uh, create a full picture of what's tested, what's not tested in the Lotus code base. And why I think this is a good idea to share with others, because I think this would be an improvement for everybody's code base to kind of know uh, what's going on. And as a first like milestone in this effort, we are building this dashboard. Uh, that Nicole is going to tell us more about, uh, but basically give, gives you an overview of what's currently tested, what is left uh, to be tested, and then giving you like uh, reassurance on what's going on and making you more certain. Uh, also kind of builds the backlog of future tests. So, so uh, this is something we are trying to introduce into Lotus, but I think uh, like uh, you, you would see more, uh, but I think it would be a great idea for everyone to do it at, at some point and just like uh, gives you an overview and insights on what's going on uh, with uh, in an automated way. Did I do do you justice, Nicola? Uh, yeah, you did. I have okay. a presentation ready, so I'm sure it's going to be a lot more clear. For yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, this was like the, the quick uh, overview of what was planned and what is going to be executed until the end of the year. Uh, and then we will we, we can also do another session once we have the major update, update, because I think it's relevant for everybody. Yeah, taking into the account the conversation we just had about test vectors and everything, I think the tool can be quite helpful for the other teams. So uh, I prepared the presentation. I can share my screen if that's okay with you guys. And just hope Keynote works this time. Okay, can you guys see my screen? Yep, looks good. Yep. I'm gonna try and make this as short as possible, but please bear with me because I wanna talk about like the whole uh, set of tools and processes that we have been working on for the previous month or so uh, under the code name system test matrix uh, until we come up with a better name for it. It's gonna make a lot more sense down the road, trust me. So we should start with the formalities since we are seeing each other for the first time. Uh, my name is Nicola. I'm a software engineer from Belgrade. I work for a company called Bloxico. Uh, we employ around uh, 14 house developers and 25 external consultants. And since 2018, we've been uh, focused on uh, blockchain tech. You know, uh, I'm not going to advertise our clients for free. But uh, for the previous uh, couple of months, uh, we took an interest uh, in Filecoin primarily because uh, we knew that like decentralized storage is a big topic today and we didn't know much about it. And we decided, you know, to uh, run a small uh, storage provider rig, you know, minor for on the testnet. Uh, and, you know, how things go, we decided to reach out uh, to Protocol Labs and we met these two cool guys, yeah, you know, both of them, Dragon is here on the call. Arul is, uh, I think, uh, the head of the QA there and a guy, you know, that does a lot of things inside of PL. And uh, we started a small team inside of Bloxico of around six people. Uh, and we decided to work on some tools to basically, like Dragon said, evaluate the current status of Lotus. And I don't see the reason why this same tool cannot, you know, be used for other implementations such as Venus and Forest. But uh, before we start talking about the tool, you know, the obvious question right there is why more tools? Because each new tool you add to the tool belt uh, adds more uh, complexity and uh, people have to learn how to use it. Also, if we wanted to like increase the quality of the Lotus code base, why didn't we just jump in into the code base and start writing more tests? Uh, but we got some insight from Raul how it works in practice, you know? 
and we decided that the better approach right there would be to uh, answer to get answers to some important questions first so we can strategize and prioritize what is important the biggest question basically out there is what is a file code node and what it does because as a test engineer uh, you are basically the ultimate user of every software system you have to know all the ins and outs you know of everything and um, that kind of thing uh, is mostly uh, tribal knowledge, meaning that uh, a lot of people inside of PL uh, know a lot about different aspects and components of the system. And um, somebody, you know, uh, had to tell us something about it, but since we didn't want to bother all, uh, you know, every day about certain state things, uh, we decided to dig in and, and uh, do an exploration of the code base. And basically that whole problem statement and the, and, and the solution definition is the reason why I think engineers won't be uh, replaced by AI anytime soon, because even if you've seen the presentation from GitHub uh, with, with you know, the AI that writes code, still there has to be a human that will specify the problem that's gonna be solved. And humans in practice do that you know, ad hoc uh, they discuss with their peers and write notes and documentation and research papers. And there's a lot of people inside of PL doing exactly that. And there is a group of um, uh, contributors to the code base or maintainers that actually implement those, uh, you know, uh, those ideas. And um, the guys that actually come up with the ideas, they sometimes write even specifications, but they are perpetually out of date because it's natural and that's okay that, you know, the implementation moves faster. Uh, but we needed something else. We read the specification and everything else, and we decided that what we essentially need is not some huge spec uh, which explains every algorithm in the system. We just needed uh, a small list, small-ish, not small, but as small as possible list uh, of behaviors of, of, of Filecoin node, uh, not every single implementation detail. And after that, you know, even if you have the, the specification, uh, you actually have to implement, you know, uh, that idea or it has no value. Uh, but, you know, on in, inside of that process of implementing that idea, a lot of things get lost in translation. And uh, you have to make sure that actually stuff is implemented properly. And the best way to do it is to write tests, you know. Um, but since we are not starting from scratch, the Lotus code base already implements a lot of tests. Uh, we needed to know uh, what is actually tested right now and what isn't and what kinds of tests do we have uh, there, you know. And code coverage uh, is not enough. Uh, it's first of all, it lacks context. Uh, all it knows is like which lines of code have been touched by the by the test runner. Uh, it doesn't know uh, what, what those lines of codes are supposed to do. Uh, it lacks any kind of like uh, architectural categorization you know what components systems and layers we have there it's just plain lines of code also uh, we do not know what kinds of tests we have because uh, it's also uh, terms like integration unit tests are big uh, some developers consider uh, some tests to be integration others consider some other tests to be integration tests and it's still a part of tribal knowledge you know and in the end you end up with something like this on the right where uh, you have some tests that test some behavior, some of the behavior is documented, some of it is not, it's uh, a certain fact that a certain developer who wrote the test knew. Uh, but if we figure out a way how to, to you know, know all of this, what is tested and what should be tested, uh, we can efficiently strategize and prioritize certain parts of the system for our future testing endeavors. So for the first question, basically what a file coin node does, um, there is no smart automated way to do it, do this. So uh, we just read the spec a lot. Uh, we looked through, dig through the lot of source code, uh, read the existing tests because oftentimes tests are uh, kind of a specification for a system. And we came up uh, with this quite big list of uh, behaviors uh, for the uh, node as a whole, you know, looking at it holistically. Uh, there's a couple of hundred of it here, and it's a work in progress. We're going to extend it every day as we uh, do more exploration. And the important thing is here is that each behavior is basically categorized by the subsystem or the component of the node that, that uh, exercises this behavior. And the bigger, you know, denomination called the system. Um, 
so when you look at these behaviors, you actually know you, you can go to this uh, like it's a task list if you want to implement uh, a new node, a new implementation of Filecoin node. Uh, in an ideal world, if this list was complete, you would just go through the whole list, uh, check every box, you know, and in the end, you would end up with a working solution, which is completely, this list is completely independent of the implementation. We don't care how it's implemented under the hood. Uh, we just want to know if it behaves like a proper file coin node. Uh, each behavior also has a unique uh, canonical ID uh, that you can reference later on. You're going to see why. And um, we are actually not going to be using Airtable in the future. You're going to see why we are, we are developing our own dashboard. But for prototyping purposes, this was useful because you can see if we group this by systems and subsystems, you can basically if you, you are a developer working or testing the block store, which is a, a subsystem of the blockchain system, you can see how it's supposed to behave in reality. So let's get back to the presentation. Uh, that huge air table is actually exported to a simple YAML file. Uh, you can think of this uh, as a like a Swagger uh, open API specification for your tests. Uh, and it's versioned inside of our uh, repository for the system test matrix. Uh, categorized and has an ID. That's the answer to the first question, how should uh, the node behave? But the second thing is, you know, uh, even if we know how uh, the node behaves, we do not still do not know uh, which of those behaviors are actually tested. And uh, one thing you can do is go through each of those tests and, and try to figure out what it actually does and, and, and create a big list like the previous one. But we decided to uh, use a little bit of automation there. So we developed a simple uh, Golang CLI tool, which we call the test crawler, uh, which parses all the test files inside of Lotus. Uh, and uh, it searches for these specific special annotation comments that we designed. And the annotation syntax is minimal, uh, non-intrusive and programming language agnostic. Disclaimer, not yet. Currently supports only Golang, but in the future, because it's a simple thing, we plan to support both Rust and C++ and whatever else is necessary. And while we are reading the test file, you can do uh, a couple of things, but two of most important things is uh, you can add this tag at the top, uh, top level of the file, which basically says which kind of tests are in the, inside of this file. We made an assumption that each file could contain only uh, one type of tests. Uh, that may not always be the case, but we are going to try to enforce it in the Lotus code base. Also, uh, while you are writing the code or you are reading the code, one other thing you can do is uh, actually add annotations, uh, which behaviors from the list mentioned previously, this one, this test exercises. And now we have the foundation for actually the end product that we are building, uh, because you are wondering like, why did you do this? Uh, you just uh, came up with some syntax, it makes no sense. The thing is the CLI tool can uh, actually go through uh, these uh, files and, and produce some uh, machine readable output, which is like cross reference uh, referenced with these behaviors. And we can render a fancy UI like this, uh, where you can see at a glance uh, what's the current state of your node. So this is the home page here uh, and it currently has placeholder test data uh, i just took this, like a screenshot of the design from our designer and you can see a bunch of systems there which we enumerated and you can see at a glance like the summary what's going on there you can see what kinds of tests are there uh, and you can see uh, if they are missing passing and failing and the most important thing how this differs from a simple let's say um, ci uh, code coverage tool is it knows the context. Uh, you cannot see from CI which behaviors are not tested. You can see only which parts of code are actually not tested. And here, by having the, the list of behaviors, we can easily say uh, behaviors that are enumerated inside of the list, but they are not referenced anywhere in the test are probably not tested. Also, uh, the files that are not annotated, we do not know their types, uh, and we can assign this small scores to each system. Uh, it's a really simple formula, uh, basically um, breaking or missing tests uh, negatively impact the score and everything else impacts it positively. And each time, whenever a lot of master changes, uh, CI uh, builds a new version uh, of the dashboard with, with the new data. And we think that this kind of visualization is quite important. You're going to see why on the next pages. Uh, and we call it the red pill for Filecoin node implementations because uh, in the end, 
if everything is green, uh, it should you should be with confidence you know that uh, your system is working properly. If we only had this uh, dashboard, it would be not so useful. But you can um, zoom in to see it at multiple levels of abstraction. If I click on one of these systems, for example, the blockchain system, uh, on the left, I can see like a summary system view, uh, which resembles GitHub. Uh, the whole UI actually resembles GitHub on purpose. Uh, and you can see like the same thing on the previous page, but a bit more detail. And you can see the breakdown of all the subsystems inside of that system. And you can also zoom into the next level of abstraction and so on uh, down to the level of a single test or a single behavior. And the more interesting thing is on the right here, uh, this is where the name system test matrix come from. Uh, this is basically for the blockchain system, a detailed matrix of all the tests and their states. You know, so uh, it's called a coded green means there are tests and they are passing, red means tests are failing. This is obviously placeholder data. Uh, I know that Lotus in production is for sure not this bad, uh, but we had to, you know, somehow visualize it, how, how it could look like. Uh, Looking at this, you can like easily see that for, let's say, uh, the message pool subsystem. For there are only there are a bunch of uh, CLI tests that should be implemented, but they are not yet implemented because everything is great. And the ones that are implemented are actually breaking. And um, you don't have to think much. You know, you just see if everything is green, it's okay. If everything is red, something's quite broken. So. Everything is still in progress. We've been working on this for a month now. Uh, the behavior list is extended every day. Uh, we need your help with this because uh, we are looking at this whole system from the outside. We do not have enough like tribal knowledge to enumerate everything, but we are trying hard. Uh, the file and everything uh, will be on our public uh, Git repo. So you're free to look at it and add your behaviors uh, via pull request, of course. Uh, test crawler for support for different programming languages is on its way. Currently, we only support Golang, but we found a nice uh, Go package for, that implements multiple programming languages, parsing multiple programming languages. And the design is still a work in progress. And the biggest issue actually is this matrix view because it's not like just simple UI. It's on D3JS magic because uh, we do not know. It has to be flexible to support uh, different edge cases, like what if some system has a thousand tests and some, the other one has like just one or none. So we are still working on solving that design problem. And that would be it. Uh, I'm gonna leave some room for questions and anybody can reach me at this email here after the presentation. Any questions guys? Yes, I have several actually. Uh, it uh, seems like a really, really nice tool. Thank you. Uh, so the questions I currently have is, uh, what is the timeline? So when we can have a, a first glance or first like use case using the system? Because it seems like uh, something really we really wanted for a long time. And we have also our own use cases and maybe we can share them with you as you mentioned or like via the pull request or something? Absolutely. Okay, uh, so uh, basically in two weeks, we plan, uh, that, that's our timeline for uh, releasing like uh, something on production. But even before that, uh, you could, uh, the whole tool is basically a static, not really static website because it's React, but you can just render it locally. So if you have the behavior list, which will be pushed there, uh, you can just pull the whole, clone the whole repo and render the UI as much as you want. Also, you can play around with changing the content, the input data, the behaviors, because the, that dashboard is only going to be as useful as the data as we plug into it. You know? Okay, uh, seems reasonable. Another question I had is, uh, it's uh, I'm in a bit, I'm missing the part when we have like. Uh, a test suite and it's some, somehow parsed from the like uh, that coded test suite. Uh, I mean, we have the descriptions, how it should work. Like uh, from the high level, we have uh, YML table and the list of actual tests, how they map together. Uh, well, basically when you're writing a test, you, you, when you write it, you actually know which you know behavior you're exercising. 
or at least if you don't know, you can uh, search the, the behavior list. If there is no such behavior there, you can add it and you can just add that unique ID as a comment, uh, you know, somewhere, it doesn't matter where in the test function. Uh, okay, we made it so, so it's in line. You know. Yeah, so just the ID, you know, in the format that okay. it's minimal, it's just like, you know, at ID and that's it. That's and it's great. a special kind of comment. Okay, yeah. thanks. That answers my question. Uh, okay, and uh, like uh, any plans for the timeline of supporting like different language languages? Maybe we can help out uh, with that somehow. Uh, we can discuss it. We we are still very very early with with different language support because basically wrapping our heads around the whole idea was a difficult process. Coming up with this behavior so we can actually show the value. Uh, you have to show real value to people with real content. You cannot talk in abstractions. So we focused on writing down those behaviors and uh, additional language support is going to happen, but it was a nice to have in this phase. So uh, I, I cannot give you an estimate on that one. Okay. Yeah, Thanks. I can play the, the TPM of the team. Uh, yeah, I think that's like a stage two uh, thing for us. Uh, really just like now seeing the, the overview getting there and then probably improving on the things we see as like really must-haves in the in the code base once we realize the result on the board and then after december maybe next year we, we can talk about like additional language support because i think with this this would like benefit everybody absolutely it, sh it shouldn't be that difficult I i'm just yeah. reluctant to commit to anything right now because we have so much to do but I think with this library that we found, uh, it should be quite trivial. And we made the whole tool quite modular. We thought about additional language support. So it's going to be, I guess it's going to be easy enough. Yeah, that's what I'm, that's what I'm asking, uh, why I'm asking. Maybe we can contribute uh, to it ourselves and that additional supports on our side. If we That would be can... awesome. Okay, but then we, well, okay. I think we can communicate it uh, offline. Yeah, and also the repo is public, so you know it's nothing secret. Uh, Nicola, would you mind sharing a link to the public repo? Um, I'm specifically curious to see the different behaviors. Sure, I'm gonna do it right now. Oh, actually, you won't find much there, but uh, I can. I'm gonna export this huge air table literally tomorrow and add it to the repo, and I'm gonna ping you. But I'm gonna give you the link right now. Oh, sure. Thanks. Um, and up to you what you're willing to share. But if you want to drop the um, presentation into a Slack message, we can all slot it as part of the meeting notes. Since, again, we did have a smaller group today. We want to make sure they can see it. I will. Nice. Cool. Thank you. Nice. Actually, uh, this other... call was like a reality check for us. So uh, I got to, you know, rush and, and merge everything together and all, all the work in progress to the repo. Now that somebody actually is going to look at it, that's not a part of the toxic team. <laughs> so please, you know, have understanding. <laughs> I have a suspicious feeling that this is uh, what all the implementation teams do right before this meeting as well. So it's fine. Absolutely. I can vouch for that. Developers work like that. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, any other last questions for Nicola? Awesome. Great. Well, we are at time, so we'll let everyone go. Um, but this was a really great presentation and a really cool tool. So I'm excited to see what it looks like even in two weeks. Um, appreciate you taking the time to present to us. And as for everyone else, too, who was able to join, thanks for your updates. And we will see you in two weeks. Thank you. Thanks. Bye, everyone. Bye.